back to D7R TV. Today again, I'm joined with uh, Colin from CNS Auto Care, and this is part two of the VXR diagnosis and find out why she wasn't running. So far, we've uh, stripped a few things off, found a few niggly little problems with it. Most of all, we found out that it's more out of time than Doc Brown's DeLorean, but it is what it is, and today we're gonna try and figure out why it's out of time and we're gonna try and get it running. So we're gonna put the timing chain back to its dating points, top dead center. We're gonna line up all the little gold links in the chain and uh, hopefully she sort of splutters into life. She might run well, we don't know. We need to diagnose what the problem is and uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Stay tuned. Right then, Carl, where are we at today? Right, today we're at uh, removing the actual timing chain casings. Uh, I've already gone ahead and removed the box purely because it's very hard to get the camera video in removal. Around the side of the timing chain casing, we have 10 10 mil bolts. We also have a single 13 mil bolt. The 13 mil bolt can be a bit tricky to get out. So we just slightly loosened the actual engine mount bolts just to allow it to drop a few millimetre which allows you to get enough angle to get this one out. You do not have to remove the whole mount off the vehicle. So we've been removing the actual cam chain housing for the first time to see what else we can expose. There's your casing. You have your single 13mm bolt. Just there, hidden underneath the water pump cover. And then the rest of them are all the 10, 10 mil bolts all the way around the side. So that's the side casing. I'm just gonna have to quickly look in just to see. Okay, so looking at it, all the guides are all intact. None of the wheels have lost their teeth so it looks like possibly the tension has been default for allowing the chain to actually drop um, a few teeth but it can possibly be snap guides as well so whenever you take the side casings off always look and try and establish what's the failure with it in the first place what's the reason it's managed to go off time Okay, now if you remember us going back to the three coloured links, and as we explained, you've got a marker on the crank for the first gold link. There's a little dot just there. You might be able to see it, the picture might not be the greatest purely because we are, it's, it's well hidden away. We need to now take the chain off, get the one gold link lined up with the dot, up the top end at the camshafts, we need to get the two other gold links lined up with the actual diamonds cut into the camshaft sprockets. Okay, back to the markers and the coloured links. The gold links are the links we're on about. There's three gold links. They're all spaced in a direction that you can tell which links belong to what. You've got two gold links that are close together and one gold link that's quite far away from either of them, which is your bottom marker. On the camshaft sprockets, you've got little diamonds that are cut out. These are your markers. So this is what we're gonna be lining up next. tensioner on this particular engine the tensioner is down the back driver side corner of the engine it's 32 mil 
socket. It's a little bit tricky to get into, so obviously you need a good selection of tools, different length ratchets. They can be very tight in there sometimes to get out. This is what I explained with the guys being in places, often or not, the tension will push back, stay stuck back, leaving the chain to go slack and allow it to jump over teeth. Well then Cole, so, if I look at that tension, it looks pretty uh, slack, especially when you can push it with your hands off, and you did these before and they're like, yeah, almost it's have to go in with a vice. Yeah, it's normally quite, quite rigid, normally once you put it in, you'll struggle to actually get it to get to the depth of actually getting the threads in. It can be a very tricky item to actually put in, and as you can see... It's lost its compression, hasn't it? Yeah, I can, I can push it quite freely. I'm not having to put a massive amount of force onto it. Um, so it is, it's, within, without doubt, a bit weak in comparison to a brand new tensioner. So that would have caused it to lose tension and then perhaps jump some teeth? Yes, yes, potentially. Uh, as I say, I've, I've done quite a few time chains on these now. Um, I even brought a non-runner myself. Um, and I had to go through the same process myself just to get it to uh, eventually run in. Um, but you'd normally find the guides have either broke or the tension has been the cause and it's failed. So what damage would that cause it if it could, failed like, as it is now? As, as it stands now, we, we're potentially looking at it could have bent valves even just the slightest bit if it's managed to jump at a high enough speed. It's hard to establish with it being out quite how far it is out, but we try to get the length of gold links as close as we can. Um, and we're averaging about three length, maybe three, three to four at maximum on the actual teeth is where we're out and it looks more so on the intake. Um, so obviously it can cause quite a catastrophic failure, to be fair. It, can, it could scrap us in the head if the damage done. Well right done. So Next port of call. Uh, obviously, like obviously, of course, we're trying to just establish if it's capable of actually running because it's come as a non-runner. Uh, the other garages, as far as I've been made of there, um, I've put it down to ECU failure that it won't run. They've checked, they've changed ECUs on it. Um, we're hoping it is back as it should be on all its original items. Is, is all we can say because we, we don't know. We haven't been there to see. But the idea now is to try and get all the leaks lined up, get it all timed back off using its original chain, which will then come off if it, it obviously either way. Um, and then hopefully just get it in a justifier. We're not going to run it for very long. We just want to see if it's capable of running. But being the fa that's already uh, failed by the looks of it. We yeah. can't, if we put it back to normal timing, it can't cause any more damage because it's already would be better than it would have been than when we got it, so. Yeah, yeah, we obviously obviously it's been turned over by ourselves and other garages already. We've turned it over by hand, as you've seen at the start of the uh, of episode one, just to establish that we're not actually making any clippages and we can't feel anything to clap like connecting when we're turning it over. It's not fouling or anything, it's not, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not catching. By, by the feel of it, so. Yeah it's, not, yeah, it's not catching and we know it's out, so when we put it back into line, again, it's, we're doing this for the purpose of just trying to establish if we just need to buy a ch chain kit or so we can run a proper compression test on the engine because we know it's all in time, so all the, all the exhaust and the intake valves are closing at the right time and not losing any compression. So, Obviously, for the time being, we're just going to use the original items um, before we tell we can tell the customer really what's going to need, need to be purchased, so that we can then strip it down and replace everything that needs purchasing.
now. Um, I'm just going to try and bring the chain around so we've got two gold loops towards the top. Sorry if sound quality is not great today. We've got like Hurricane Katrina going on outside or something. I don't know. But we'll do our best. What Colin's doing now is he's uh, trying to line up the uh, single gold link to the bottom timing mark on the crank pulley. And then bring the two gold links to the top that will, in theory, line up with the two diamonds on the exhaust and inlet cams. Okay, since the last clip, we've stripped it down, we've put all the timing marks back in position. As we explained, gold link, diamond, gold link, diamond cut out. That's your two camshaft pulleys in place where the chain's concerned. If we can go to the base. Again, as you can see at the base, we've got the little dot marker in the crank pulley and we've got the gold link. So she is in time according to to the chain markers. To the chain markers and the top diamond markers. It's the last to clip. We've lightly reassembled the engine. Um, the reason we've not put it back as everything's tight perfectly to torque sequence is we know even if we manage to get this started, we're gonna have to pull it back apart just to replace all the actual faulty parts. So but which are so far we find that this chain slack so it's going to be chain tensioner we've noticed one of the vvi solid uh, pulleys is slightly out despite the chain showing us that all the links are in the right markers so there's potentially a dephaser issue on the intake or the camshaft um so and up to now we're just now about to check cylinder one again just to see if we made any difference by putting it back in time it was 20 PSI at the last check before we put everything back in time, so we're now going to see exactly where we're at with it again. Go. Yeah. Right, okay. We had 20 PSI before, we're at 30 PSI now, so it's had a 10 PSI dropage on that cylinder. 30 is still nowhere near perfect. However, if we manage to get up by 10 PSI on a down cylinder, the likelihood are is that on cylinders three, four, two, that the pressure is also going to be back up to where it needs to be. 
So now what we're doing is we're performing a compression test on cylinder two to see if it goes from any difference from 150 and see if we can get some more PSI out of it. cylinder two. Well there we're back again. We've just run a second compression test on cylinder one. We went from 20 PSI at the original start, sorry, before we put the timing straight. Now you wanna come in now Carl? We are currently just under 150 PSI. What did we do to achieve that, Carl? Firstly, we put it back together. We put it together and we put all the timing straight so all the valves was closing at the, at the same time as they should be. Um, we were still a bit low. We've slowly got it to increase. We've poured a cap full of oil down the system just to try and help the, seat, the, the rings lubricate and seal. Um, and the achievement is there. If that was a bent valve, we all would have just passed straight past it. So we believe the actual issue now left with this is potentially a ring sealing issue on it. As but, well as? As well as we will, we will obviously have to redo the timing chain to make sure it's sort of got all fresh parts. Um, but yes, I, that's where it's at. We started off at 20 PSI. And we're now up at 150 PSI. So we're 150 on cylinder one, two, three, and four now. Yes, yes, one, two, three, and four that is now. So it's almost time to see if it'll actually uh, fire up, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, obviously you get the coil packs into it. We know it's all in time. We've got the compression there now on all the cylinders. So it's time to attempt a, a, a start. Well then, Carl, not uh, the best news we wanted we've achieved some things we've got compression up on all four cylinders so they match yeah it's uh, 160 now across the board on all on all four cylinders and um, after turning that over for a little while and, and obviously getting a bit of oil to the control rings to seal on cylinder one we've got it perfect 160 psi across the board now but she still doesn't want to play ball you try and fire her up, she backfires, splutters, but doesn't go. It's almost like she's trying to go, but she doesn't go. So we think that the dephaser issue has pulled it out of time, even though all the dots and all the links are all lined up in the correct timing positions. With the dephasers being out of line, it's still out of time. So what's next, Carl? Obviously, we've got to now go back to the customer and explain to him that we can't use the parts that are on there to establish it, that it's going to be good. Uh, we're going to need a set of defasers. It was, it was a bit concerning that we couldn't put the actual locking tool in. They was very fractionally out still for putting the locking tool into place, even though the coloured links matched all the right locations. So, potentially, the camshafts are very, very fractionally out. Um, but it will just be a fraction because like we are getting 160 across the, across the board now with it so I'm going to go have a look at a, another set um, and hopefully we'll try and source a set and a new chain kit um, get the timing back straight and it should allow it to then physically run for us 
once we know the timing tool will also lock in as well as pulling links marking up, we know then we're 100% on target with where we need to be with the timing. At the moment we're at about 90-95% of where we need to be by the looks of it with the actual the phases being out of line for the timing tool despite the actual coloured links matching into the actual locations they need to be in. So we're, we're, we're obviously we're almost there now but we are still a little fraction out somewhere with it. It's a bit frustrating with all the uh, the work gone in but at the end of the day we need to diagnose the issue before we can actually spend money on it. So there's no point in getting all this new parts and stuff for it to still be knackered. But the, we now have compression on the cylinders, so it's highly unlikely that there's a bent valve or there's a hole in the piston or there's a ring land fail. But again, until we can absolutely take out the fact that it is in time and it still doesn't run, we can't diagnose it any further than that because of cost and time constraints. So, yeah, it's back to the drawing board. Try and uh, have a look at another set of cam sprockets, ones with good defaser pulleys, because these don't line up, so they're not right. And uh, yeah, see if she plays ball. She fires out, she goes to fire over, but she's not quite there, which probably throws the crank position sensor off because it's probably reading the last part because when you try and crank the car over it's at the last end of the cranking sequence where the car tries to fire then dies and then backfires so it's a fail for today but it might be a win tomorrow not literally tomorrow but the next time we're on the car so from me and Colin thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next one peace out